This is my 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited with a 3.6 liter engine. To remote start the engine, you press the key fob start button two times, but that is not working. The other buttons on the key fob work okay. There is a message displayed on the instrument panel, remote start disabled, start vehicle to reset. I start the vehicle to reset the fault, but why does the key fob not start the vehicle? Hi, I'm Dave, and this is the Carf Tools channel, and this is how I fix the key fob remote start problem. Well, you may have already guessed the solution from the title of this video. I purchased this Jeep Grand Cherokee new in 2015, and now, almost eight years later, it still has the original battery. I did not load test the battery, but by the sound of that sluggish start, I think it's time for a new battery. The battery is located under the passenger seat, and it can be accessed with the seat moved all the way forward and up. This is a powered seat, so if the battery were completely dead, you would not be able to move the seat to access the battery. You could probably charge the battery or jump start the vehicle and move the seat, or in worst case scenario, you may have to remove the seat to access the battery. Here the seat is fully up and forward, so it should be no problem from here. So let's turn the engine off, and be sure to wear safety glasses when working with a battery. And gloves would be a good idea also, and you'll see why gloves are a good thing later on in this video. Here's the cover over the battery compartment, and it has four retainer clips. The battery is held in place with a bracket, and two nuts will have to be removed using a 13 millimeter socket. Notice the orientation of the bracket, and you see why later in the video when it is reinstalled. The battery has a vent tube attached. Here's the positive terminal of the battery, and it looks close to the underbody frame, which is grounded, but no worries, that part is plastic. Using a 10 millimeter socket wrench, I loosened the negative cable from the battery post. And move it out of the way. Here I'm using a 13 millimeter socket to remove the two nuts on the hold down bracket. Notice the orientation of the bracket because it only fits in one direction. Unplug the vent and tuck that and the negative cable out of the way. Using the 10 millimeter socket, I loosen and remove the positive cable from the battery post. Pull the battery out at an angle. Now 
Now here's the new interstate battery priced at $227 from a local interstate dealer. Now, I often shop at Costco, but my local warehouse did not carry this particular interstate battery. Just for kicks, the battery voltage on the original seven and a half euro battery reads 12.14 volts. And the new one is 12.73, so it's a little over a half a volt difference. Now, I do not have a battery load tester, but I'm convinced this battery is causing the problem. This is the vent connection, and this side is plugged. The new battery has two open vent holes, and one has to be plugged. And here's the plug on the terminal cover, and it will go here. Slide the new battery in. And of course, the cable is not tucked out of the way as I intended, making this a little more difficult. Finally got the battery in place. I attached the positive terminal. Tighten the 10 millimeter bolt. It would be a good idea to use a torque wrench and so just be careful not to over tighten the bolt. I don't even know the torque spec. I'm sure it's less than 100 inch pounds. Slide the battery into place forward. Now this view is looking down inside the battery compartment with a hold down bracket on the original battery. Here's the new battery, and I didn't realize it's about two inches longer than the original. And the hold down bracket will not fit. Now this new battery actually has more cranking amps. So uh, the auto parts store either gave me the wrong battery or didn't have the same as the original. Anyway, we're gonna use it. After editing this video, I noticed a dried spilled drink in the battery compartment, and I should have cleaned that up. Sorry, I didn't video this part, but I had to modify the bracket by extending the slots to allow it somewhat fit when turned 180 degrees. I use a screwdriver to hold the bracket close to the battery. Then using an impact driver, tighten the nuts. I may have to come up with another bracket if this does not hold, but I think it looks good so far. The vent is plugged in. The negative cable is attached and tightened. Here you can see gloves would have been a good idea to prevent bloody knuckles when installed in the bracket. Snap the cover over the positive terminal.
then snap the battery compartment cover, you should hear four clicks. Now I can start the engine. I'm going to show you a clip here starting the engine with the original battery. Pay attention to the sound of the starter. It sounds weak. Now listen to the new battery as it cranks the engine. Okay, I'm going to try starting with the remote control again. Give it two clicks. Well, look at that. That's more like it. There are probably other issues that could cause your remote start to not work, but in my case, the weak cranking battery was the problem, not the remote. I hope this video may have helped you solve your problem with your key fob remote start, or even helped you how to replace the battery. And if it did, please subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave. Have a great day.